Good morning and welcome back to Goldshaw Farm. We have a very big day here on the farm. We've finally gotten to the point where the grass has grown enough and the pasture's dried out enough that I'm ready to start turning my cattle out into pasture. This just might be my most favorite time of year. My Scottish Highland cattle are always so excited when they get out to grass for the first time this year. You know, the other day I actually had an escape that I was dealing with. And so yes, they are itching to get out here onto this fresh green grass. I'm still in the process of finalizing my upper pasture fencing which is where most of these gals are gonna spend most of their summer. But I did set up this morning this little quick temporary paddock. I will keep them in here probably for a day or two, you know, just to get them used to this electric fencing. They've all been trained to electric fencing, so they're very used to it, but it's been about, I don't know, six months, five months since they've been out in electric fencing. And so I always like to give them a reacclimation period. But yes, this fence is definitely hot. Yep. If you ever wanna test a fence and you don't have your fence tester, you can always use just a blade of grass. It'll conduct just enough electricity that you can tell that there's the pulse, but it also won't give you so much electricity that you're gonna zap yourself like if you touched it directly. You might notice that the shape that I've set up here is kind of irregular, and that's just simply because as you get over to this part of the pasture, it's still a little bit too soggy. And I don't want the cattle and their heavy hooves damaging the land. And so this area right here though is dry enough and they can get in here. And so, yeah, this is probably about enough space for them for, I don't know, one, maybe two days. And then once they're done here, I'll start to move them up into the permaculture orchard. You know, part of what I got to do here is catch up with the grass. I don't want to get the grass ahead of me too much. Overall this year, I've got a couple of different groups of cattle I need to run. And so making sure I have enough grass is going to be a priority this year. Hey boss cow, how's it going? I can tell she's already like an Enough with the yakking, can you just start getting us moving here? And really the riskiest part of this transition is getting them through this tunnel. This gate actually backs right up to this gate, so it actually creates a hard perimeter, so I'm not too worried about them going up here. This spot here is really the only risky part, but this grass over here is so attractive that I shouldn't have any sort of problems. Are you ready, Audrey? How about you, Annabelle? Bonnie McMurray? Ariel, Anna Green Gables, Amanda Hug and Kiss, Belinda Carlisle. Yes, that is the group that's gonna get turned out today. I'll talk to you in a minute about what I'm doing with the boys and what has to happen there. But enough with the yakety yak in here. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, girls, come on, girls. Fresh grass. Hey, girls, come on, girls. Come on, girls. Fresh grass, come on. Come on. Fresh grass, come on, girls. This will probably take them a minute to get used to what they have access to now. <laughs> but only a minute. Wow. Don't be scared, Bonnie. It's okay. Fresh grass, Bonnie. It's okay. Yep. They immediately go into Hoover mode. They're just chowing down on this grass. <laughs> it's okay, Belinda. Come on. Let's go. You're missing out. Inside. There you go, girl. Gosh, look at Belinda. She's gotten so big. When you compare her size to now, what she was last time she was on grass, it's, it's actually pretty remarkable. Hey Amanda Hug and Kiss, I know you're my shyest cow and you're actually the one cow that I've never actually grazed personally on pasture and so you're the one that I probably need to watch the closest. Looks like everybody's out here and everybody's getting settled in. I don't know if you could hear that but the boys are crying. I think they're a little bit jealous. How's it going Ariel? You happy to be back out here? I can tell you are. <laughs> that energy it's great well that cattle move could not have gone any smoother whatsoever that was great now I just need to close off this gate and then I need to shut this gate and now I have a surprise for there you go come on in what do you think Randy you've never really even spent much time over on this side yeah pretty much the entire time that macho man's been here on the farm he's actually spent all of his time on that side of the fence in a relatively small pen but look at that. Now able to run around and be free. You can eat all the girls' hay too, yeah. Any leftover hay that they have, you can eat as well. Now you might be asking, why am I keeping Macho Man and Joey Ramon back here in the paddock still and not letting them go out to grass with the cows? And well, the answer to that question is, I don't want Randy getting any of the girls pregnant. And so I'm holding him back for a little bit and letting him just at least get a little bit more space to roam, but not giving him a chance to go spend time with the girls just yet. You know, cattle have about a nine month gestation period and nine months from now would still put a 
they're very excited for the space. And nine months from now would still put us in the middle of our Vermont winter. And so I wanna give them just a little bit more time. They will eventually get out there with the ladies, but they're gonna probably spend about another month still in this area before I turn them out. The other thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna separate Belinda Carlisle, Bonnie McMurray away from the rest of the herd. Those girls are probably gonna end up staying in the lower permaculture orchard fence while the rest of the herd is up top. As I've said before, I wanna give my younger heifers like a year to like basically be redshirted and not have the risk of having them get pregnant so that they can have just more time to develop and get bigger. But yes, I gotta say, looking out there and seeing my cattle on grass, it fills my heart with so much gosh darn joy. Whoa, and look at Randy run. Boy's getting to stretch his legs finally. Good for him. Ah. Of course, he wants those cows. Like he's like, oh, my hormones, they're raging. Let me get out there. But yeah, the ladies are just munching away. Yeah, I'm gonna guess I have maybe 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer in that paddock before I gotta move them. What do you think about all this activity, Mr. Pablo Barncat? I would really like it if you would feed me some food right now. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, well, I'll feed you pretty soon, but first we gotta do our other chores. Oh, I can tell my large white farm dogs feel so neglected because the first chore of the morning was a cow chore. Here, Abby, you can have a biscuit. Come on, Toby dog, let's go inside. I got a biscuit for you, come on. Of course you get a biscuit too there, Toby. Abby, you already got a biscuit. No need for a second biscuit. But I'm being such a good girl. I apologize if you guys hear me doing weird voices in this video. So as you guys know, I'm getting ready to release the Toby Dog book in September. It's like a novel written for kids, but I think adults are gonna like it too. And I'm gearing up to record the audiobook very soon. I'm gonna be doing all the reading and all the voices myself, and I've had to like create a character voice for every animal in the book. It's been a lot of fun, but it's got me kind of in a weird headspace when I think about my animals and how they talk. Let's get the water pumping for everybody. All right. Let's see how our birds are doing this morning, huh? Morning, birds! Come on, dogs. <laughs> Jeremy, I saw what you just did to Abby. That was not nice. You ain't gonna buzzards. I'll feed you. There. <laughs> the pigs are a little eager to see me as well, and I think, I don't know if you heard, got a little bit too close to the fence. <laughs> don't worry, girls. I'll be with you in a moment. I'm gonna feed you. Don't worry. Hang on. You're next. You're next on the list. Yes, my ongoing game of Angry Birds IRL continues. It's really funny having them really only divided by a small fence and seeing them face off side by side. I think the pigs get jealous every single time I feed the birds. I think the birds are just kind of like aloof and ignore the pigs. They don't seem to care. How are you doing there, goosey gal? Still hanging tough? I wonder if she's gonna hatch something soon. I, I think she should be getting close. Like particularly if she has some ducklings underneath her, they should probably hatch in the next week or so. Duck egg, goose egg. Uh, another duck egg. Another goose egg. Are you doing your hard work there, girl? I didn't say you had to go. I was just checking for eggs. Birds can be so temperamental. Goose egg over here. We got at least three goose eggs to throw in the incubator. We've actually got some goslings hatching as we speak. But you probably won't see much of that in this video because I'm actually working on like a 30 day hatching diary showing what it's like to go through the process of hatching geese start to finish. But maybe I'll show you guys just a sneak peek. Adorable? Black Francis is such a weirdo. Poor Jemima. Yeah, he's definitely got an attraction to ducks, which I've never seen a rooster that into ducks before. Jemima's back with her flock. So there's her Cayuga Drake. That's who she usually likes to mate with, not Black Francis. Yeah, can you see how she chases out all the other birds from her nest? She's like, stay away, Jeremy. Why are you biting me, man? She's a good mama duck. Let's go check on the pigs and see how they're doing, huh? Good morning, little ones. How's it going? Yeah, you guys are always so excited to see what I brought you. And you love eating my feet. I know. You're very weird. Please, stop eating my tripod. <laughs> you guys, you gotta calm down. 
Yes, the great pig experiment of 2023 continues to go well. All right, guys, I got your slop. I got your slop. So specifically, if you're curious, they've got a mix of uh, kitchen scraps here. There you guys can have that. And your brewer's grains. Enjoy. Yes, yeah, so overall, things are going excellent with them. I've been very, very happy with working with them. The whole setup that we have of them going in through the forest here has been perfect. No escape attempts or no even seeming escape attempts. So I think that this is definitely a good way to keep pigs. I actually think the biggest problem I've been having is trying to shoot videos about the pigs because they get so excited about seeing me. They get so excited about seeing the camera equipment that sometimes it can make it a little tricky to shoot. And for those who've asked in the comments, yes, I tried to make a video where I strapped a GoPro to a pig and it went disastrously. What you doing there, little Polly? Are you eating my boot? And in case if anybody's wondering about names, we got Phil Leotardo, Artie Bucco, and Little Polly Germani. The bucket's empty, guys. There's nothing else in it. Nope, nope, you're done. You're done, you're done. Whoa, camera almost got knocked over. See what I mean? Now I do still have one last cow chore I have to do. I have to get the gals water. And so let's go get the water system going, huh? Hey, Amanda. Are you enjoying the happy cow mobile? Yeah, I built it last year for you girls. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to use it. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with the happy cow mobile, this is like a mobile shade cart that I use to bring around to give the cattle shade because a lot of parts of our grazing area don't have good access to shade for them. And so that's why it's such a handy device. And yes, I mounted some brushes on it for them to scratch. Got a holder for minerals, which I probably should get them some fresh minerals. It got a little bit damaged uh, over the winter, um, but not too bad. And so I just got to fix up the shade cloth a tad and you'll be ready to be back in action. This happy cow mobile is gonna stay down here in the lower pasture and it'll be for the heifers. I'm going to be building a happy cow mobile 2.0 later this spring. And that'll be what they end up using up top of the pasture. I'm working with my buddy, Alfred. My buddy, Alfred. And he's gonna be doing some redesigns here. And uh, we're gonna probably try to make something a little bit more robust as well as something a little easier to move. Yes, Belinda, those are the hoses. I know, I know. Belinda loves the happy cow mobile. She's been using it since she was just a little calf. So I don't know if you guys can see this down here. This is part of the line for our watering system. This little coupler sits on top. And then I have like these little attachments that hook up to a hose that are the male end of it. And I find these little cable ties are really useful for not losing your hoses when the grass starts to get really tall. I have thousands of feet of this hose running all over the farm and it connects back down to the hydrant over by the bird yard. And so then all I have to do is plug this guy in. And then I got water ready to go for my cattle. And then when I disconnect it, water stops running. So I don't have to run back down to the hose and hydrant to shut it off. This type of equipment and technology is super handy for when I'm running back and forth all around the farm to do various chores and water the animals each day. Audrey's exerting her boss cow status. And so yes, yeah, so if I want to get water to my cattle now, it's very easy to do so. Now it's set just like that. And now all I have to do is connect the quick connect. There it goes. You know, it's always a little nerve wracking when you use a water system for the first time of the season because like something could have gone wrong over the winter, but no, everything's working out pretty good. And it looks like my cows are gonna have some fresh water. I know boss cow, you're gonna be able to get the first drink. Well, I guess you can lead a cow to water, but you can't make her drink. Oh, wow, would you look at that? Big old tuft of Highland hair. Yeah, these girls will start shedding and dropping all of their fur and really their coats thin out a lot when they get into the warmer summer months. And then probably by like September, October, they start to grow back in again. But it's definitely one of those good days on the farm. Isn't that right, Ariel? Oh, yeah. I should brush you out so you can get some of this fur off of you, girl. You don't know anything about the macho man, Randy Savage, and where I'm coming from. 